Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns where the church is the backbone loves in the bow. And the five-string melodies groove in. With the farm and rose where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sightings began last year, October of 2020, when I moved to Cut and Shoot, Texas. The first one was about two weeks after I moved into my home. I was on my front porch looking So across the street from my house is a big field with uh, goats. And it's probably roughly a football field in length to the woods on the other side of the field. That's including end zones. So a little over maybe 120 yards roughly from the fence at the road to the woods where the other fence is. Past that, it's woods and it's Texas woods. It's really thick brush underneath and um, very tall trees. And it was October, so end of October, roughly. There were leaves starting to fall. And there was kind of an open spot through the trees where I could see sky. And I noticed movement in that open spot. But it was a tall, there were tall trees on both sides of that open spot and, you know, limbs with leaves. And I thought I saw movement. So I'm watching it to see if maybe it was a buzzard behind there or a some other kind of bird flying by. And I noticed that the tree trunk on the left side was abnormally thick. It was very thick and very dark. And I stared at it. I just stared at it thinking, what made it so wide there on that tree? It looks like it has a big bump on it. And the tree was not, it was brown tree. You know, it wasn't black, but the spot was black and it was very large. And it just looked like a big bump on a tree trunk from where I was. So, you know, it was a good, my yard to the road is probably, I'd say 30 yards to the road and then another 120 yards. There's 150 plus yards to that tree. And uh, so I'm staring at it thinking, what is that? You know, and I was just relaxed. I wasn't thinking much of it, but I stared at it for a while and nothing else moved. So I gradually, I just went in the house. When I came back out probably 20 minutes later and the bump was gone. That was the first thing that happened. A couple of days later was Halloween. It was October 30th. I went to a party. October 31st was a, a Sunday. So I went to a party on Saturday night and, you know, I had just moved here. So I had, I went to this party. It was one of my sister's friend's house and um, I stayed there till probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. I don't drink really. So, you know, I came home from there. It was a good 40 minute drive. <laughs> Everything's far away from cut and shoot. Cut and shoot is definitely country. I drove home from this party and when I got home and, you know, went in the house and I got ready for bed and then I went back outside because I smoke. I, I had a final cigarette. So it was close to 2.30 in the morning when I finally went outside. And I was sitting on the porch and I heard the loudest Bigfoot howl. I mean, it was really, really, loud. and it was far away. It was, it was, I would estimate a quarter to a half mile away, southeast of me, because my house faces west. So there was one long howl and I thought, Oh my goodness, what is that? And then the next one, he, he howled again almost immediately after really loud and. And I thought, I think I know what that is. It sounded like the Ohio house. It was classic, really, really long, really strong. It was extremely loud. So there were two howls from him and then an answering one from about the corner of that goat field, but in the woods. So it was to my um, northwest. And so I felt like I was right between them. And... um That one answered once, 
So when the first one howled twice, all the dogs in the neighborhood started going crazy. They were, it's not really a neighborhood neighborhood like you would think. It's, it's houses here and there in the trees and they all have dogs and the dogs were just going nuts. And so when the one answered though, they all shut up. There was not a peep from a dog. The frog shut up. The bird shut up. I mean, everything was just, you could hear a pin drop. And then the first one howled again. And then the second one howled two more times. And I went in the house <laughs> and I thought, Oh my goodness. I moved right in the middle of Bigfoot territory. So I, I have to explain where my house is. So my house is um, down on a small country road. It's a dead end road. And there's a lot of, I would call them compounds. There's a lot of trees, dense underbrush, dense forest. And in amongst the trees, there are little dirt roads that go in and then they've cleared spots where there's three or four houses. So, you know, that's why I call them compounds and those are fenced, but they're neighbored by trees on three sides. And so everybody's separated by trees, except for my house, my landlord's house, because I'm on their property and the goat property. But everybody else is surrounded by trees and I'm surrounded by trees on two sides. And so it, there's a lot of dense forest there and property is only, I'd say a mile and a half by road. So about probably less than a mile as a crow flies to the Southern edge of the uh, Sam Houston national forest. So I'm very close to that. And anybody or anything could probably walk through the woods and get to my house from the national forest crossing two little two lane roads. And that's it with hardly any traffic. So I'm sure they can get there very easily. So that was that week. Three days later, again, I was sitting on my porch. I came outside and there was a loud noise racket going on. Something was instigating coyotes. So back again at the corner of that goat property, maybe in the woods, maybe 20 feet or so. But there's a house over there through those woods. And so it couldn't have been more than, I'd say, 30 yards from their front door making this noise. It sounded like a pack of coyotes and they were howling and yipping. You know how coyotes do when they get excited. Coyotes kind of yip and howl when they're excited. So if you've ever played a harmonica for a dog that can't stand it and it goes kind of crazy and starts howling and you can tell it kind of hurts his ears, but he just starts howling. Well, that's what these coyotes sounded like. There was a voice in amongst the coyotes that sounded like a human, but much louder, much deeper, like howling. And so it was, it was making this howling sound and then, but not like the Ohio house. Again. This was more like it was trying to imitate a coyote howl, but really badly. And then the coyotes would chime in. And it was really strange. And I actually recorded it, just the sound. I recorded it for about 45 seconds. It went on for, for 45 minutes. It just went on and on and on. And two days after that happened, somebody came in and cleared all the trees in a strip, probably 200 yards strip of trees that was about 100 yards wide behind that goat fence. So there's still trees behind the goat fence, but they're much thinner, easier to see through, I guess you'd say, because that's somebody's property. But the state land, they came in and cleared it. And not only that, but for the next two months, there were black helicopters flying every night low over that woods there. I thought that was extremely strange. So that was all that happened back then. And um, I thought, well, it's over that, you know, that was just something that happened, right? Well, March 16th of this year, I was sitting on my porch and it was broad daylight. And I started hearing whoops. And I mean, classic whoops, like whoop, whoop, right behind me, like right behind my house. And so I felt like I should have been able to see them. There were, and it sounded like there was at least eight, you know, 
slightly different locations, slightly different tones. And they were just having a good old time. It sounded like they were having fun. And um, I felt like they should they should be right at the fence line. I should be able to see them, but I couldn't see anything. I could just hear the whooping, and it sounded like they were having a blast. I didn't know what to think of that, except that they're back. So that group, they were there about three weeks. Now, in, I don't know if anybody knows, but in February, we had an extremely cold spell in Texas. And this part of Texas doesn't usually freeze, and it got down to uh, nine degrees. Power went out. And so it was about a month after that that they came back. So this one group, I guess they set up watchers. I don't know. But I would hear them during the day. Just fine. They weren't howling. They were whooping a lot. And one, I even heard do the classic gorilla sound that, or maybe a chimpanzee sound like a woo 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 ah, thing. And I was just cracking up. I was like, I never heard that they made that sound, but that's the sound I heard. And amongst all the whoops, and they were whistling as well. I can't whistle, but they were just doing the whistle like you'd whistle for a dog. So I was just laughing. I mean, they sounded like they were having fun. So they were there, like I said, about three weeks. And then um, they set up, okay, I was working at the time, I was working for a big home store, you know, one of those big chain stores. And I was closing at night and I was working about five days a week. And so I would get home close to 1130 because I had to clean the store and then drive home. And I have a gated property. So I have to get out of my car, open the gate and then <laughs> drive the car in and then walk back in the dark and close the gate and then walk to my house. And like I said, my front door is about 30 yards from the road and the gate's a little bit closer than that. So this one night it was probably like the 18th of March or so. I came home and you guys have to realize I live by myself and I'm 62 years old. So I'm no spring chicken, but I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. So I'm, I'm not dead yet. So I, I got out of the car to open the gate. And as soon as I put my hand on the gate, I heard a whoop and a really bad owl call. It sounded like someone imitating an owl really loud, really deep. And I just froze. And it was coming from about, there's two trees about 40 yards from there to the south along the fence line where the gate is. And so I, I froze and a lot of thoughts were going through my mind. And <laughs> one of them was, well, if he wants you, he's got you. And I kind of decided, I mean, I started to get scared and then I thought, you know, there's no point in being scared. So you know, you have a choice. You can either be scared and just fall apart or you can take it in stride and act like, you know, and then I, I remembered what, you know, people say on the show about mind speak or whatever. I thought, well, it's worth a try. I mean, you know, I'm going to die anyway. Right. And just as I got ready to say that I, all this went through my mind, I heard him drop out of the tree and it sounded like somebody dropped a 75 pound bag of dog food from three stories. I mean, it hit the ground with a thud that I felt in my feet four yards away. I mean, I felt it. And so that's when I just decided to do the mind speak thing. And I said, uh, in my mind, I said, I'm not here to hurt you. I have to open the gate, drive in, come back and close the gate. And then walk to the house. And I said, and I really hope you'll let me do that. And I didn't look up over there. I was afraid to look. I knew he was standing. I probably could have seen him if I looked up, but I didn't. So I opened the gate. I went back and got in the car. I drove in. I parked the car. I got out. I walked back to the gate and shut it, thinking he's right there. And then I turned around and I walked back to the house. I unlocked the door, went inside and locked the door, and then I kind of collapsed in a heap in front of the door. And what I said in my mind was, thank you. <laughs> thank you for not killing me. So that was that was pretty intense. I mean, that was, that was really 
scary. I had never heard a thud like that. And especially not in the dark. I mean, it was pitch black. I mean, people do have booger lights around here. You know, they got the, they, there's a big orange one at my neighbor's house and then one that shines through the trees and the goat guys got some, but they're not in the goat enclosure. They're at his house. There's trees over there, so they have to shine through the trees too. So there wasn't a lot of light. It's just enough to see the path from the car to the front door. And I don't usually leave on my porch light. So that's how that went. That was terrifying. And uh, when I got in the house, I was like, oh, my gosh. You knew what that was. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. So uh, over the next week or so, they posted somebody in those trees right there next to my house. And uh, that little strip of trees is there's probably like a half acre lot that is next door to me. There's a pond behind my house. I should say beside my house is to the south. And then that half acre lot of trees. And they had come in and thinned them out over the winter. So now I can see the house that's beyond there. There's a, a white house beyond there. And they have a rather long driveway. Well, it's, it's about maybe 35 yards long. That's gravel. And um, I can see their car and everything, but uh, their house is back from the road. They really don't have a, like a yard. It's more like trees in the front. They have a backyard. But those trees next door, the half acre lot, goes all the way back to the thick trees that are behind my house. And so they they can easily just walk right in there from, from that side. And they had posted someone there every night. Every time I would go out to smoke at night, I would get a wood knock or a owl hoot or I would get uh, a whoop. So uh, the wood knocks would always be answered. The whoops and owl hoots sometimes would. But I got to tell you, I, I, I know a little bit about owls. I used to live in a house um, in California where there were owls in the trees um, because there were the only trees around. You could see my house from 10 miles away because it was the only tall trees in this valley area by the freeway. And so owls lived up there and there were probably 30 or 40 of them up there. And what I noticed about the owls was when I would come home from work or come home after dark, they would not make a peep until I'd been in the house for 30 minutes at least. And when they hooted, they hooted once and one would answer. They didn't sit there and hoot, hoot, hoot. And so I got so they were my reverse alarm that if they stopped hooting, I would know someone was close or something was close to my house. And so uh, they don't just hoot in a tree when you walk by. They shut up. They're not an alarm bird. They're trying to not to be heard or seen. So, uh, yeah, that's what I know about owls. So if you get out of your car and an owl hoots at you, that's not an owl, most likely. At least that's my my experience, I should say. I'm not an owl expert by any means, but I've just noticed that about owls. So then, um, one night, this owl, so I came out on the porch. The owl hooted, <laughs> yeah, right about the same place where he dropped out of the tree. So that tree. Apparently, he liked to climb that tree. It had a big limb. Uh, it still does. So he hooted in from that tree, and it went like this. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! And then it kind of went, ha-ha! Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! And then he jumped out of the tree and went kind of down the road. And he still was, hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo, all the way down the road. And I was like, what are you doing? doing it was so funny it was almost like he was laughing like yeah i know you and you're not a threat and i'm i'm going home i'm going to go eat or something but what i i have found interesting is that a lot of people around here have chickens the goats are across the street they haven't touched the goats other than the best sighting i had so there's billy goats over next to the fence there's a strip that's fence where he keeps billy goats to keep them away from the nanny goats until he's ready to breed them. And there's probably 15 nanny goats with kids, you know, and uh, so 15 
in the one group, and then were two billy goats over there in the strip that's fenced by the woods. And I noticed the one billy goat, I used to watch him, and sometimes he would jump up and uh, try to get leaves out of the tree, and so he would like stand on his back legs and reach as far as he could. And once in a while, he'd get a leaf. Well, this one day, instead of doing that, he was putting his front feet up on the fence on the wood side. And I thought, well, he's just eating leaves through the fence. But he would get down and he would eat something and then he would get back up there. And then he would come back down and he would eat something again. And I thought that was weird. And while I was watching him, okay, so there's a there's a shed over there. It's not really a shed. It's a it's a goat shelter to keep the rain off of them if it's rainy or whatever, and the wind, I suppose. So it's just an open shed with an awning in the front, and there's a feed trough or whatever in it. And I've seen the guy that owns the goats over there, and he can walk under that awning without bending over. So it's at least an inch or two over his height. And I would estimate that to be, you know, five, nine, five, ten, maybe. He's not super tall, but I haven't seen him up close to me, so I don't really know exactly how tall he is. I just would say he's not sure. So he can walk under that awning without bending over, is what I've noticed. <laughs> Notice a lot of things when you smoke and there's nothing to look at, right? I don't sit there and stare at people, don't think I'm totally weird, but I just notice things. So uh anyway, I was looking at this billy goat and I saw something kind of orange go through this space above this limb in the woods that was above it was above the awning. And um it looked kind of like a bird tail, but it was orangish. And I, I thought, well, that's not the color of a cardinal. That's a strange color. I, I'm I wonder what that was. So I, I stared at that spot thinking I thought it was a bird that landed down where I couldn't see it in the woods and was going to take off. So I was watching to see if it would take off. And um, I just kept staring at it, at this space in the trees for this bird to take off. And all of a sudden, I noticed the color in a different location that was the same color that I'd seen, but it was above where I'd seen it and to the my left. And so I, I it caught my attention, so I looked at it and it got gradually clearer and clearer as this creature stepped out from the shadows of the tree into the space between these limbs where I could see it. And it just stepped forward and it was staring at me. It was staring at me and I was staring at it. And it was like I said, probably 150 yards away. It was the color of a, an Irish setter. So if you Google a picture of an Irish setter, and it also, so what I had seen was its arm went across the space and it had this trailing fringe of hair under its arm and probably three to four inches long, I would guess. And the arm was really long and kind of, it was didn't look really huge or anything from where I was standing, but I was far away. I can't tell you super details, except that as it came forward, I could see its face was framed in this same color of hair. And the face was a dark gray color. So I would say, what can I compare it to? Probably... um ashes from a fire that's burned out by itself, you know, that's not been disturbed. So when you look at it, like the, there's light gray and there's a darker gray, so the darker gray color. And also I would compare it to, to an orangutan. So if you've ever been to the zoo and seen an orangutan up close, the colors, I'm, I'm just talking about the colors, not the features. The color of an orangutan is the orange color and then dark gray skin. So the only feature I could really, really make out was the eyes. And that was where they should be. And I mean, because it was just darker where the eyes were. So I knew I was looking at a face and not anything else. And as tall as this thing was, so the space where it stepped or put its face out was at least three feet above the top of that awning because it was behind the awning. And so I would put it at, uh, 
I have to put it at nine feet tall. I can't, unless it was climbed up in the tree and sticking its face out. Because the space is literally, I mean, I haven't been over there to measure, but at least three feet above that awning. It may be even more. And its space was in the middle of that opening. That's where the opening is, three feet above the awning. So the, the top of its head may have been even taller than that. So I saw part of its chest. The chest was um, uh, not super hairy because the, the, the orange hair was kind of wispy. and But it wasn't super hairy, but it was hairy. I mean, you know, I could see skin through the hair there. I couldn't see any other details except like the arm. And it stood there for, I mean, we must have stared at each other for at least 40 seconds. It was forever. I was afraid to take a breath and I was thinking, you're going to suffocate if you don't breathe. But I didn't want to close my eyes and my eyes were starting to water because I didn't want it to disappear on me And if I closed my eyes for a second. So uh, I look, <laughs> that was kind of an unbelievable, really. It was crazy. So I would say 40 seconds. And then it just backed up. It just slowly receded into the shadows. It's not like it suddenly did it. It just kind of faded into the shadows. And I knew it didn't disappear. It just stepped backward, but really slowly. And I think it was as, maybe as curious about me as it, as I was about it. I can tell you that uh, they do make a lot of noise at night when they're here. And uh, there's been different groups. And the reason I say that is because they make different vocalizations. They have different habits. So this particular group whooped and, you know, made owl sounds. And there's another group that made frog sounds and did wood knocks only. One day uh, I went outside and this was broad daylight as well. I heard, I thought it was someone chopping woods and wood in the woods over there. And there's some houses back down. There's a little dirt road and there's some houses back down in there. And I didn't really think anything of it. I thought somebody was chopping wood. It was just chop, 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 but a smooth rib rhythm. Like they didn't ever get done chopping, you know, and it went on and I kind of tuned it out. And then I heard wood knocks behind my house in several locations, probably at least four different places, at least four different, uh, trees they were knocking on at the same time and then to the south of me i heard at least three more sets of wood knocks that were in different slightly different locations or different there was a different timber to them and then all of a sudden the one chopping the wood <laughs> that i thought was chopping wood started moving away really quickly like it was still chopping wood but it was moving away well there's no guy back there going to be walking down the road chopping wood and especially not that fast it sounded like he would have had it been on a pickup truck and hitting a tree every two seconds you know yeah, it was really strange and as soon as he started moving away they all started moving in that direction and i i'm telling you i should have been able to see them there's a lot of clear open ground for them to cross but i didn't see anything and that surprised me it, it surprises me that I haven't seen them more because they are all around. And then um, a long time ago, I was driving a truck. I, dr I drove a truck uh, from 2003 to 2011. And at the time that this incident happened, I was alone because uh, I'd had some really bad students and <laughs> I had to take a break. So I was by myself. I picked up a load of paper in Lewiston, Idaho. And it was winter time and it was about 10 degrees that day or when I picked it up it was 10 degrees and papers are very heavy load it's heavy 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 so it, I was almost at the truck's limit for legal weight and I90 was closed because of snow and ice and um I really needed to get to Billings, Montana and I didn't want to sit there for two days and wait for them to reopen the road. So one of the truck drivers at the truck stop where I weighed my load told me you could take US-12. And I had never been on that road. 
He said it was good road. <laughs> it wasn't exactly good road, but US 12 winds down through a canyon and there's a river at the bottom of that canyon. I'm not sure the name of the river, but um, it goes about, I don't know, probably over 100 miles at least through this canyon. Well, once you get down in the canyon, you don't have any signal. I didn't have phone signal and I didn't have a signal for the truck. There's a satellite thing on the truck where you can send messages and I had no signal for that either. So I was by myself on that road for 60 miles. I probably passed one vehicle going the other way. And about 60 miles into that, it started getting fog and it's icy fog. So what it does is it sticks to whatever it touches and turns to ice. So my truck was getting heavier and heavier and the road was right next to the river. There was no guardrail at all at that time. There is now, but there was no guardrail. And the road was cracked on the right. And there was chunks of ice floating in this river that were as big as Volkswagens. So it was super cold. It was getting colder. And it, I had this icy fog. And so my truck was getting heavier. And I was afraid that the road was going to crack off and I was going to go into the river. Besides the fact that the road was getting super icy. So I had slowed way down. And I passed a ranger station that was closed for the season. And there was no place to pull off on this road. It's two lanes. You got the river on the right and the canyon on the left, and it goes straight up. It had trees on it, but it was rocky and went up straight up. So I just kept going very slowly. I went about 30 miles past that ranger station, and there was a pullout for a rooftop boat landing that would have been open, you know, in the spring or whatever. It wasn't open, obviously, but there was a place to pull the truck out just off the road, and it had a retaining wall between the road and the parking lot. And I could just fit in there. And on my right side were trees and then the river. And so I was grateful for that. So I couldn't slide off into the river. And there was bathrooms there, but they were closed. And so I I just shut down the truck and I could have probably shut it down at 3.30 in the afternoon. And then it got colder and colder and it was below zero by I don't know, eight o'clock at night, I was watching TV. And all of a sudden, I started to smell something. I smelled something horrible. And it smelled like a wet dog mixed with garbage from a grocery store dumpster in the sun and a toilet, you know, mixed all together. And it was a horrible smell. It started to gag me and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. I got up and looked in the front because I had taken out all my trash when I was at the truck stop. There was nothing in there except. I had had some hot wings and I had thrown the bones away in a bag and then tied it up. And so that was in the front and I, I could smell this horrible smell. And so I'm checking that and I'm trying to see where it's coming from. And I just, I had the curtains closed in the front. So there's curtains that go around the, the side windows and the front and then a curtain between the front and the back. And I had both of those closed, but I had stuck my head through to see where the smell was coming from. And when I sat back down on the bed, the truck moved a little bit because it's air ride. And anytime you move in there, it kind of bounces. So I sat down. And when I sat down, something hit the side of the truck right where my head was. My head was probably two feet away from where this rock hit. It was almost as if whatever <laughs> threw this rock or whatever they threw hit the side of the truck so hard that I was sure it made a huge dent. And immediately then I knew what the smell was. I just put two and two together and I knew what it was. Also, well, I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was all by myself. I couldn't call for help at all. There had been no vehicles on the road for four hours. And so there was nobody there. It was just me. And the only thing I had between me and it was this truck. And the truck was idling. So I couldn't hear anything outside at all trucks idle pretty loud and so the first rock hit and then it was followed by five more rocks so six rocks all together I counted them <laughs> and I was just sitting there cringing and I was thinking if I stick my head up front or go up front to like honk the air horn or something like that which I thought about doing I thought if it throws a rock at the window of the truck it's going to break it and if it does that I'm going to freeze it up because I was inside 
this truck with the engine idling and the heater on full, but it was still so cold in there that my shampoo and rinse bottles were frozen, frozen into a solid chunk of ice. And so I just sat there cringing and <laughs> waiting for it to be done. And it took about 45 minutes. What happened was after he stopped throwing rocks, I could smell that smell getting stronger and then weaker and then stronger and then weaker. It was as if he was walking all the way around the truck trying to figure out how to get in or something. Never did try the door, but I locked the doors good so he couldn't have got in the door unless he broke a window. Anyway, and the wind the windows are high off the ground. I mean, it's probably 10 feet to that window if you're looking right in it because you got another three and a half feet above your head. So it's pretty high up. But I was scared he would break a window. I was really scared of that. And if he did that, I, I think I would have froze to death or he would have come in. And I was glad I was idling because I thought that was kind of a deterrent because it's loud and maybe scary to an animal. I don't know. And the reason I, I thought immediately that it was Bigfoot was because of the smell. I've heard of the smell and the rock throwing. Bears don't throw rocks. There wouldn't be a person out there throwing rocks at a truck. If a person had been out there, I mean, it was way below zero. I'm sure they would have knocked on the door and asked to come in, you know. So I, I just think there's nothing else that could have been was so far from civilization, so far. So I just sat in there. I barely slept that night. And um, the next morning, I didn't even open my curtain in the front until I heard someone pass on the road. And that was at 1030 in the morning. So after that, I got out and I did walk around and I found four rocks. I didn't find footprints. It was just a solid sheet of ice. The only thing I saw that was maybe possibly something from it was there was a place on the side of the canyon wall where you come down to the road that was the ice was broken off, like something had slid down or stepped on it or something fell and knocked it off. I don't know. But. Everything else was covered with ice and icicles, and this lip of rock was knocked off. The right ice was knocked off of it, and that's all I saw. I didn't see any, you know, and after I left, I was really regretful that I didn't leave it some food because the other thing that happened that night that may have made it happen, and I don't know, this is just a theory of mine, was that a rat got into my truck just before I smelled the smell. And I didn't know it was a rat. I heard rustling in the front, and I found out later that it was a rat over the next week or so. I quit driving the truck about 10 days after that. And it wasn't because of Sasquatch. It was because of the rat. This rat was huge, and I kind of think that it chased the rat. The rat got into the truck, and it, what it did was it chewed through the grommet, the rubber grommet that surrounds the stick shift. And um, it lived under my dash for a, a week or more. But I think that it chased that rat. The rat was huge. When I finally saw it about six days later, it was longer than my shoe and twice as wide. And it had this scraggly like uh, winter coat on it. And I think it, it chased that rat into my truck and it was pissed off that the rat was in there. But that's just a theory. So I don't know. Anyway, so about 10 days later, I quit driving, <laughs> quit driving trucks. And um, that was in 2010. So back to my house and what's happening now. So back in April, roughly, my neighbor lives on the other side of a, a grove of trees. And it's kind of a wooded lot that nobody's cleared to build yet. And I can see part of her house and her where her car is and her driveway and stuff like that through the trees. Now on that side of my house, there's a pond on the other side of the pond is this grove of trees. Well, one night I was sitting on my porch smoking a cigarette and somebody was sitting in her driveway with the lights pointed at her house, but they had just barely pulled into the driveway. So the lights were shining up her driveway and I wondered what they were doing, you know, just sitting at the end of someone's driveway. That's kind of weird. So I just was sitting there wondering. I wasn't like 
ready to go over there and say, what are you doing? But so I'm just sitting there. And then the lady came out of her house and she started walking down the driveway. Well, I could see through the woods, these patches of driveway, and I could see her walking, you know, past the tree and then past the next tree. And I could see this headlight shining on the driveway and on her. And that's when I saw this thing. It, it was on all fours, but it looked like a gigantic spider. I'm not kidding. It was like a 600 pound spider because it was flat backed and on all fours, but it had this little nub sticking up in the front, like a spider's head. And then the elbows were up as it walked and it was completely silent and it couldn't have been more than 15 feet away from her. And it was following her as she walked down the driveway. And I could see it, you know, between the trees when, when it would pass onto these lit portions of the driveway, I could see the outline of it. And it was black as night and just the silhouette of a gigantic spider walking. And so that kind of freaked me out. That was weird because I, I was like, well, is that following me when I walk out there? And I think it might be. So, yeah, I've heard lots of different vocalizations and different groups have different ones. And some just communicate, it seems, by tree knocks and some by owl hoots and some by whoops and then some by howls. And um, then there's something that makes this god awful sound. It, it sounds like uh, it sounds like if you drag metal over a concrete driveway. But it's super, super loud. And I thought it was, I honestly thought it was machinery for months and months and months. And then suddenly one night it started up where it normally starts up. And then it came toward me and it came really fast. Like it must have been close to a mile away. And within a minute, it was right down the street. And it seemed to, you know, I heard this, these sounds and it was, at least two of them making these sounds. And then it started, there's a dumpster down the road because there's a family with like six houses, you know, where grandma, grandma and grandpa live in one. And then the kids with their kids live in the other ones. And, you know, weird uncle Joe lives in a, a trailer out back, you know, it's just a compound basically. And they have a dumpster and it sounded like they were rolling that dumpster around and rattling it really loud. I went in the house because <laughs> I didn't want them to get closer to my house. I don't know what they were. Uh, I don't know what that was. That was crazy scary. But I can hear them up to 1030 in the morning. I mean, they're making that noise during the day, too. And it's a terrible noise. And it, I don't know. It, it's usually far away. But yesterday, I heard it in a different direction. So it's moving around. But I don't know what that is. That was terrifying. And when I hear it now, if it comes closer, go in the house. One night I was in my bedroom and I was getting ready for bed and I heard singing and it sounded like a woman singing, like opera singing, you know, in a different language, but singing really loud. And it went right by the back of my house and there's no light out there. So I didn't open that door. I, I ran around to the front door. And I stepped out on my porch, and by the time I got out there, the singing was way down the street already. So it went really fast from the end of my house, and it would have had to come over two fences to get there to where I heard it the first time, and then go over another fence to get to the road. And, you know, I don't know if they really go on the road or not, but anyway, the singing was really loud, and it got down probably 200 yards maybe down the road and then a male voice the deepest baritone male voice i've ever heard joined in with her and they were singing together and they were singing the same words and whatever words they were they were singing the same words really loud and when they got done they made like cackling sounds like almost like laughing but not like human laughing it was it was like hyena laughing, you know, it was really, really strange. 
But what amazes me about that is if it, I don't, I don't think it could have been a person. I'm not, I don't think a person I I've lived there for a year and nobody has ever come into my yard. I can't imagine somebody climbing two fences and going through the yard and then climbing another fence to get to the road. But anyway, what amazes me is that it had to have been a language and a real song with words that both of them knew for them to sing together the same words. It wasn't something she was just making up. And it wasn't just gibberish. It was words because they finished the song together in unison. And um, I just found that totally amazing that they have a real language that they know songs. I just found that really totally amazing. Yeah. So then other things have happened. Like they come, my garbage can is right behind my back door and my back door is in my bedroom. And so I'll get ready for bed and I get in bed and then I do something on my phone for half an hour and then I turn off the light normally. And about 10 minutes after I turn off the light, I hear something out there. And at first I didn't know what it was, but it took me about a week to figure out that they were, or something was, opening my garbage can lid and then dropping it gently. They, they don't slam it. They just gently drop it. Now, I've looked in there and there's been no evidence that anything's been in the garbage. But I don't take my garbage out very often. It's just me. And I might have one bag a week, maybe two. And I, I usually take it out on like Monday or Tuesday because the garbage truck comes on Wednesday. And so one night I did an experiment. I put, I had a bag of cherries, being cherries, and they were, you know, they're getting out of season. So these were like mushy and didn't taste very good. So I just decided to throw them away. So I put them on top of the garbage in a shopping bag. Well, next morning was garbage day and those cherries, the whole bag was gone. It was just gone. And there was no evidence that anything had ripped any bags in there or anything good. That one bag was just totally gone. There was no evidence of it in the yard or anything. And so I don't think raccoons do that. Raccoons make a mess. I've had raccoons in my garbage and they pull stuff out and rip it all over the yard. And I didn't find any seeds. I didn't find any, uh, the bag or anything. So I think they took it, but I can't prove it. I don't want a gift, you know, so that's why I put it in the garbage. I don't want to be like, hey, here's some food for you. I just was like, no, this is my garbage. You can have it if you want it, you know. But yeah, so I hear sounds every night. So it's ongoing. And um, yeah, so that's what's happening. And those are my Bigfoot sightings. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow And the five-string melodies groove in With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing and I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah